distinctly remember a biology teacher in school who was very inspiring um, and I always had an interest from, from right back um, near the age of 11 or 12 which has carried on through. My first thought was to uh, try and do teaching, but then I think my search for knowledge, I really am intrigued by new knowledge and chartering uncharted territory, and so I think that's what took me into research in the end. One thing about science is it's a discipline and so we don't rely on someone's opinion, we don't rely on um, gossip, what we rely on is the data, the information that we generate to speak to us. It's not us controlling the data, it's the data telling us the story and so we're sort of the knowledge brokers for the community and a community which has um, the, the privilege to allow people to ask the questions that need to be asked and find the solutions for those questions. Uh, science is a really interesting area. Um, what drives you is having an interest and if you have an interest and a passion for it you're going to always be able to work hard at that. You're going to want to work hard at that. Um, I would certainly say uh, following your heart and your interest is, is really going to get you far. You have to be patient, you have to be persistent. Sometimes you knock on a door and you can't get it to open, so you have to find another door to open to solve the problem. So you have to be creative, you have to work as a team. It wasn't around 30 years ago. There must be something driving this. So we were the first in the world to describe that one in 10 infants have food allergy, um, and that's really uh, launched a whole set of investigations all around the world. There's now thousands of people involved in trying to work out this really new problem of the modern epidemic. We have seen a dramatic increase in food allergy prevalence over the recent decades and what we know about that is it's happened too quickly to be due to your genes so it must relate to changes in the environment and the interesting thing is that rates have gone up most quickly in Western societies so what we understand is that it's the exposures we get living in a westernised developed world that promote um, allergic conditions. The immune system is incredibly complex and it really relies on people taking multiple approaches and studying different parts of it and to combine that knowledge in order to be able to find the answers that might be able to help treat these diseases. So the factors we think are important, we call it the five Ds. So we say diet and dry skin, so we know kids with eczema are at increased risk. If we could prevent eczema, maybe we could prevent food allergy. We also know the way we, that we feed infants is really important. So that's two of the five Ds, diet and dry skin. The third one is vitamin D. So the further from the equator you live, the more likely you are to have food allergy. So we think vitamin D is an important part of the mix. And the last one, of the one is the one that everyone knows about, the hygiene hypothesis that I call dogs and dribble. So it's something about the exposure to the microbes in the early first few months of life or maybe in utero that stimulate the immune system to be trained to deal with um, foods as we eat them. Recently we've discovered that the, in, the bugs that live in our gut are very, very important for programming healthy immune responses. So it's this exposure to a broad range of good, healthy bugs that helps to train the immune system not to respond to things that are harmless and then to still respond to things that can cause harm. The approach that we are taking in our group could certainly be applied to any number of, of different allergens. We're the first group to test this approach um, for treatment of treating a food allergy. If this works for peanut, there's definite prospects that we can develop specific um, treatments for other tree nuts or other foods to which people have allergies. Our latest trial was very exciting actually in its outcome. Um, based on the work that I'd been doing before, looking at the role of the gut microbiota in immune programming, 
it seemed like uh, an important idea to test whether giving a good bug together with peanut oral immunotherapy might help the immune system switch off and reprogram away from allergy towards tolerance. And so we embarked on this clinical trial where um, we tested a combination of a probiotic together with peanut oral immunotherapy in children with peanut allergy. Um, we recruited 62 children with peanut allergy and randomized them to receive either the com combination treatment or the placebo. And at the end of 18 months, we tested to see if they could tolerate peanut. And to our surprise, just over 80% of children who received our treatment were able to um, go home eating peanut at the end of our study, as compared to only 4% in the placebo group. We feel like we're on the cusp of making this major breakthrough that will change thousands and perhaps millions of lives. And so the Australian Food Allergy Foundation came to the party very early in the piece and said, there's a problem out there, we want you to sort it out. So they gave us some incredibly important early funding that leveraged us to actually get bigger funding to then help solve this problem. So the early investment helps to lever bigger funds to actually get the job done. And without it, we probably wouldn't have got off the ground. You, you're really stuck by, by your resources. If you don't have funding, you can't engage people, you can't buy the equipment and the reagents you need to do research. The more funding you can get, the more research you can do. There's no ceiling on the amount of research you can do, and the more research you do, the more likely you're going to be to reach the goal you're trying to achieve, the, the more likely you're going to be to actually find a cure. They're lifeboats, actually. Um, you know, they, they pick up where other funding isn't available and allow you to continue on your path of research because a block at that point could be the end of your um, particular project. So they keep things alive. This treatment could save lives, absolutely. When we see a drop in food allergy, that's the start of the end. And when there's no more food allergy, that's the end. So with food allergy, it wasn't here 30 years ago, it won't be here in 30 years if we do our job properly. So yes, funding is incredibly important to finish the job.